Hello and welcome to Sofia, Bulgaria for an IFSA Strongman Grand Prix. Nine athletes in total have uh, gathered here. And some of the top athletes in the world as well. The, the likes of Jarno Hams, uh, Robert Skopanski from Poland. There is Skopanski on the far right, a very, very tough contender. Indeed, uh, from Finland, we have uh, Ilya Kainen, the big two-meter tall Finn. And Erwin Katona, there's the man with his trademark goatee from Serbia. Three times Serbian champion and a real powerhouse. But the heat here is just about as strong as these guys. It is 40 degrees in the shade. And when you're carrying 150 kilos of bulk, you're in a world of hurt. Well, Jarno Ham's smiling, looking uh, pretty cool from here. Jarno is one of the top IFSA men at the moment. We've seen him win uh, a couple of Grand Prix on Eurosport, and he has to be one of the favorites for today. Well, they're just reversing up and down this uh, seven and a half ton bus. It's going to be a 20-meter course, and Agris Kaselniks is going to get us underway. Kaselniks of Latvia, weighing in at 150 kilograms. Very solid man. Now, uh, the secret to uh, a good bus pull is, uh, well, of course, to have the ground level. If you're trying to pull uphill, it's almost impossible. And uh, you want a very, very flat ground as well and good pumped up tyres. And this certainly seems to have all of those elements because it's coming and it's coming quite fast now. Kaselniks, that was solid. And uh, his time, 27.41 seconds. That's there for the others to beat. And, uh, next out then it's Zolt Zabo of Hungary. The Budapest based man, got the uh, mountain climbing boots on, they'll help with uh, gaining some friction against the ground here, though uh, on, in these conditions with that rough concrete it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Giant arms and legs working in unison here, this is solid from Zabo the Hungarian. And uh, that's a good time. 28.62, just shy of the 27.41 by Kaselniks. And uh, I think we'll see a lot more of Jabo over the next few years. <laughs> Zdravko Zanev of Bulgaria, the number two Bulgarian in this contest. And if he looks a bit smaller than the others, that's because he is. There's only 102 kilograms of him which uh, in old money is somewhere around the 225 pound mark or uh, 16 and a half stone. He's really what's uh, known as a, a uh, under 105 kilogram competitor or uh, a lightweight competitor. There's only two categories in strongman. You're either in the open or the under 105. So he's fighting against the big boys. And tell you what, in an event like this where body weight helps, He's uh, always going to be fighting a uphill battle, as it were. So, 43.79 the time there. And I think that does deserve a round of applause. Solid performance from someone so light. Well, <laughs> someone so light when compared to these other guys. And let's compare him to Tobias Ide of Germany. He's uh, a big man of Bavarian origin. He weighs in around about 135 kilos. He's uh, just under six foot tall. Powerlifting background. Look at these arms dragging that rope in. And there's a real battle at the moment to find out who is Germany number one. And uh, Tobias uh, definitely has a claim. 29.12. That's uh, a solid time. Puts him into third by my reckoning. And Kaselnik still in first. As Vladimir Ritsov gets the harness on the number one Bulgarian and he's donning the uh, blue speedos <laughs> of, uh, that he likes to wear well very small shorts anyway he's attacking this well is Ritsov 
130 kilos, six foot three man, perhaps a little too upright. His uh, forces on all going forward and his hands were all over the place at the end. 26.48 though the time and uh, that will put him ahead of Cassell next. That's uh, fantastic. The local boy does good. But uh, now time for a, a big gun. Robert Skopansky. He is uh, the IFSA version of uh, Marius Pudzianowski, I guess you could say, or certainly the Polish uh, counterpart to Pudzianowski, who doesn't take part in the IFSA contest. He's uh, all to do with the Super Series and the World's Strongest Man. So Skipanski is uh, Poland number one for IFSA. And what could he do here? He's pretty good. Oh, time, it's come through, 24-24, so Skopanski in first position. Another big man then takes to the ropes, and it's Yanni Ilakainen. The Finns have a history of putting out very tall, strong men. Yanni Vertinen is a good two-meter tall man. So was uh, Juha Matti Rassinen. I shouldn't say was, he's still on the circuit. So is uh, Yanni Virtanen, of course. And uh, this man, Yanni Ilakainen, comes in over two meters tall as well. Of course, uh, Joko Ahola, another great Finn, not quite so tall himself, but I have to say all of them were great truck pullers. And 26-17, not quite as good as Skopanski, but uh, a very good result all the same as Erwin Katona of Serbia takes uh, to the harness. Katona, three-time Serbian champion from the south of Serbia. Speaks great English and uh, I have to say he's a real uh, intelligent, charming man when you meet him. I've only had the pleasure of meeting him once in uh, Austria. And uh, he's a funny guy, I have to say. 24-63 then for Erwin Katona. And uh, while I'm chatting, he's getting on with the business. That's him in second position. Just uh, four tenths behind Skipanski. Jarno Hams head up. Oh, he has nice technique, but a slip there could really cost Hams. And again, big mistake. Hams was complaining of uh, a little bit of flu before this. He often has a wee excuse uh, in hand. And uh, I guess with this kind of heat, anyone feels like they've got the flu. He's sweating away. 40 degrees outside. And the time, 27.03, slots him into fifth position. Skopanski in first. Katona second. Ilakainen in third. Stick with us for this quick break. Well, welcome back. It's second event, Farmer's Walk, a real classic event. And Zdravko Zanev of Bulgaria has uh, the pleasure, or the misfortune really, of having to go first. And will be the only man going on his own here because everyone else will be in pairs, nine competitors. Uh, and uh, by virtue of him coming last in the bus pool, he has to go first here. 150 kilos in each hand. That's 330 pounds on either side. So the pickup, pretty difficult for this 102 kilo man. He's got to take it 50 meters. He's only done 25 and the hands go up. He's had enough. Well, for some, this may be for time. I think for most, this will be for distance. Here's a couple of big boys. It's uh, Zolt Zabo up against Tobias Ide. Ide, the German on the far side, looking solid here. Zabo's already gone. He's gone down. Well, the German is doing very well here. The Hungarian in all kinds of trouble. And look, the weight has broken. Well, isn't that interesting? Ilka Kinnanen, the referee, calling over some help there. And I think that looks uh, properly broken. There'll be some welding necessary to fix that. And Ide's 25 meters at least was uh, stopped. And he certainly won't turn around and go any further now. This will be a, a discussion. Marcel Moster keeping his eye on the other lane. The uh, Dutch referee. And that's it. Zolt Zabo has packed it in. 
And Tobias Ide will no doubt uh, be a little unhappy with that situation. Well, I guess he'll go to the end and have another crack at it. And that means we're going individually now. This is Agris Kuselniks, the big Latvian. He's uh, the new uh, top Latvian on the scene now. Bergmanis has retired, or certainly appears to have retired. He uh, ran a competition not long ago, seen on Eurosport, uh, the IFSA Grand Prix of Latvia, where he had flu and was going to retire. And I just wonder whether he will retire. Little Birdie says he's still training hard, and we'll have to see what happens there. Watch this space. But Agris Kaselniks is certainly a worthy... A very worthy champion of Latvia. He's making some waves here. Will he make it all the way to the 50 meter mark? He will, I think. He's short again. One big effort from Kaselnik will do it. Off, over the line. And uh, he'll get a time there of 52.25. So the big boys have something to chase now. And Jarno Hams has something to prove because the Dutchman's uh, flying out of the blocks here. Now, is he going to turn with his oh, the old uh, drop and pick up trick that uh, Pudzianowski started a few years ago? Basically, it means you don't have to turn with the weights. And, well, anyone who's uh, tried to turn with anything really heavy knows it just bashes into your legs, and it's uh, very difficult to do. Much easier just to drop and pick again, and Hams is not finishing this either. A bad or relatively poor bus pull for him, and now a set of farmers' walk weights that haven't gone all the way. Not a dream star for Hams at all. I wonder if he's hurt his hands. You know, well, he's certainly looking at his hands. And a good sniff of ammonia. This is what Vladimir Ritsov is doing there. Get the aggression going. The Bulgarian in front of the home crowd would love to do something special here. Oh, he looks a bit shaky at the start, though. Doing well now, though. He's into his rhythm. Vladimir Ritsov, who has uh, taken over from Adam Darash as the number one Bulgarian. Uh, I suppose Darash would have been here otherwise. But uh, Darash, for several years now, has been on the scene. I guess that proves the pedigree of this man, but not today has he shown it. Ritsov, uh, I would have thought, uh, as a number one Bulgarian, would have been slightly more impressive. But he's putting in a performance that the crowd can at least get behind a little bit here. Be great if he could go all the way for the 50 meters. It looks very doubtful though. And uh, yeah, he's uh, calling time now. So uh, that looks uh, somewhere around a 30 or 40 meter mark. It's uh, actually been given at 33.95. So Yanni Ilakainen, the big fin. Now, here's someone who's uh, much closer to the world-class level. He's being uh, walked along next to by another Finn, uh, Ilka Kinnan, the referee. Well, they're up and driving again. He's got a good grip, and he's going to need it if he's going to make it all the way in one go. And if he does, it'll be a good time. Oh, yeah. He's gone all the way. That will be a super time for Ilakainen. 29.06 is what the clock stopped at. And that's what Erwin Katona, the Serbian, now is up against. Again, does the drop and pick up technique. He's built like a bull, Katona. He might look short on television, but he must be six foot two. Just so thickly built, and he's quick. He's very quick. 28 71, and Erwin Katona takes the lead in the Farmers. What can Robert Skipanski do about it? 
We'll have Skopansky up last. Well, that's not entirely true, actually. They're going to allow uh, Ide, the German, a final crack at it if he wishes to. The implements broke on him in the first heat. And uh, I guess the big question is, if Ide goes for it, will he be uh, given the first result if it's not as good or uh, the result he takes here? Well, we'll find out in a minute. Skopansky then. Very quick in the first leg. 28.71 to beat. Oh, this is quick. He's attacking this, and he's getting quicker and quicker. He's got his foot down, pedal to the metal. It's 25 seconds flat. That is outstanding. Number one. Will it be first place, though? Well, I bet my house on the fact that Tobias Ide is not about to beat Robert Skopansky. We saw him in the first heat struggling a bit to get to 25 meters. At least this time, uh, well, let's hope the equipment doesn't break on him. And, oh, he's walking away. He's not happy. He's done a callus. And uh, that has stopped him in his tracks. Oh, that's terrible luck. 12 meters is all he's given. Ninth place. And he did better than that in the first attempt. How unlucky. Skopansky, though, the leader. Katona second. Ilakainen takes third. And the points then. Skopansky by two over Katona, the Serbian. Ilakainen, the Finn, in third. Two behind Katona. On we move to uh, the super yoke. The super yoke weighs in at 400 kilograms. And poor old Tobias Ide has uh, to come out and attack it first. 25 meters the course. I reckon anything between uh, 15 to 20 seconds is really world class here. And uh, most top strongmen should be able to finish this. Looks like a good, solid implement. But uh, it is very hard to, to understand <laughs> just how hard it is to take the weight of 400 kilos through one leg. To stand up with it, the five or six inches needed to move with it. Sure, that's hard, but uh, most... Uh, Fairly strong men in the gym can do that. It's when you start trying to shift the weight. Hello, ladies. When you shift the weight from one leg to the other as you're driving forward, that's uh, where you need uh, huge big bones and muscles to be able to take the strain. Jules Jarbo of Hungary then. And uh, certainly a very stout character. No lack of uh, power around the midsection there to take the weight. And he's chosen not to wear a belt. That is a big surprise. Most people would be uh, booted and suited and wrapped and strapped. Well, perhaps he does have a belt there. It's uh, maybe just tucked under the squat suit that he's wearing, it, but he's going to make it all the way. Ide's time was 44.93 seconds. That time's just come through now. So certainly a long way from a world record which is uh, be down under 15 seconds in the IFSA competition. Actually, it's 14.75 for IFSA. Oh, Zabo's hit the wall. Big man struggling. Come on. Couple more strides all the way he needs for the clearance. He's done it finally. And the time there, 60.28. Well, look at this. Talk about suited and booted, wrapped and strapped. <laughs> belt and braces. This guy's just double belt, isn't he? Zdravko Zanev of Bulgaria. 100 kilos virtually his body weight. This is 400. Four times his body weight. And he's trying to walk with it. Brave or foolish? I'm not sure. It's certainly very difficult. Super yoke often, <laughs> he's given up there, often uh, easier for the really big men who've got uh, huge powerful midsections. They can absorb the heavy weight through the body and drive through with their legs. 
And that's it. Little wave to the crowd, his uh, local crowd. And they should be proud because that's, uh, well, what is it exactly? It's a distance of well, 6.48 meters is what he's given. And that's not too bad. So, Jarno Hams of the Netherlands. Two events down, and no one has been impressed so far with Mr. Hams, who's usually on good form. Well, he's up and he's moving. Oh, he's moving quicker. This is much better from Jarno Hams. Chasing that time of uh, 44 seconds by Tobias Ide of Germany. He's going to blow that out the water. This is solid. Excellent. 20.97 for Hams. Finally, Jano Hams uh, finding his feet. <laughs> and uh, Vladimir Ritsov. Still only 25 years old, but now Bulgaria number one is uh, by the, the tune of Ramstein getting driven on here. He would love to finish this and fast in front of the home crowd. He's certainly much bigger than his compatriot Zdravko Zanev who only managed just over six meters. He's going to finish this and I think in one. Egged on by Moster, the referee there. He's done it. Oh, loving that. Well, he looks like a man who needs to do a, a bit more gym training, and he could be a real force in the future. And his time there, 29.88. Solid result. As Agris Kaselniks looks like he's giving us a lesson in how to super yoke. This is going to be quicker than Hams, I think. 20.97 to beat. 17.55 the time there. Wow. Leaves us with three to go. The big fin, Yanni Ilakainen, coming out now. Oh, he wasted a bit of time there, didn't he? From whistle. He should have had his breath already in and ready to stand. That was a bit of an amateur mistake. And then it uh, took him a second or two to brace up the weight. He's moving now, and it's big, long steps. To beat Kaselnik, he needs 17.55. <laughs> wow, well, he's uh, done it. He's gone in ahead by uh, 0.2 of a second. So Ilakainen now leads the contest. Erwin Katona, the big Serbian, oh, gets the wobble on there. Oh, the big man struggling here. Oh, he's got a bit of the old Saturday night legs going on here. But he's managed to recover, and he's uh, over the line. And his time, 21-12. That's uh, just behind Jarno Hams. And currently good enough for fourth place. Bet he'll be in fifth at the end of this, so because Kapanski looks like the man on form at the moment. This is good stuff from Skipanski. Driving over the line. Oh, yes. Very solid. 1728. That's even faster than Ilakainen, and that gives him yet more points and yet a bigger lead. Kaselnik's down in third, Ham's fourth, Katona disappointing, I think, in fifth. Skopanski then by five ahead of Ilakainen, Katona back by one point in third, and reads off the Bulgarian, putting in a good performance at the moment to hold fourth. Welcome back to uh, the Bulgarian IFSA Grand Prix. Zdravko Zanev is uh, pressing out 120 kilos in the log there. And uh, it's a best of three lifts contest. Maximum weight, of course. Vladimir Ritsov, he too, going for 120 kilos. Not bad use of the legs. For a top strongman, it's uh, pretty much uh, a warm-up weight. 
but I guess when you're only 102 kilos like this guy, this next one, 140 kilos, is going to be hard. <laughs> Couldn't even get it off his chest. Now here's a big boy, Zolt Zabo, with big shoulders, the Hungarian, 140 kilos. Oh yeah, no problem. That will bring out Vladimir uh, Ritsov for his second attempt. Again, it's 140 kilos, just over 300 pounds. Solid clean. Needs a drive from the legs. Oof. Well, perhaps uh, more of a dip under the weight once he's driven. But uh, it's back to the drawing board and the end of the Bulgarian charge in the log press. As uh, the weight goes up here to uh, 150 kilos. Zolt Zabo again, zero problem. Out oh, now then, Erwin Katona, the uh, big Serbian, going for 160 kilos. Oh yeah, easy. Well, you can see how explosive he is. That's a huge help. Kaselniks again, going for 160. Whoo, that just popped up, didn't it? Kaselniks is. Uh, a man coming to form. Again, Ilakainen for 160. Oh, even better. And for two meters tall, that's great pressing. With such long arms, that's not easy at all. Skopansky, again, trying to join the others on 160. And he's done it. Not much use of the legs either. Zolt Zabo again, out for his third attempt. And he's going for 160 kilos. Well, that shake of the head there. Tobias Ide. As we said, a fairly short, stout figure. Big old triceps on him. Can he smash this out? Yes. I'm not sure how much more there is, but it, that was good for 160. So we move on then to uh, 165 kilos. Kaselniks gets the call. Oh, up first, and it's easy. Skopansky. He was all arms and shoulders last time. Can he use the legs a little bit more? Yes, he does. That was quite slick. And he gets given the green light there. Well, Hams is a man who is warming up to this contest. What can he do here? 165. Yes. Good lift for Hams. He looks good for at least 10 kilos more there. Ilakainen, the tall fin again with the snappy technique. Will he explode like he did before? 165. Easy. Now on to uh, Tobias Ide. First man to attempt 170 kilos. Oh, no, no legs at all, just blasting it up, but he's lost his balance. And we have to remember under these intense hot conditions, it's uh, going to be more and more difficult start to get the fainting coming in as this heavy log presses down on the neck katona serbia 170 oh yeah easy 
Brings out Cassell next then. The Latvian who's been uh, two for two so far. That was a hard pull to the chest. And this, I don't think, will go. Oh, what a battle. A great second attempt. No, that's it. He must be worn out by now. Skapanski's turn then at 170. Oh, yes, he ekes it out in the end. He's got a dodgy right shoulder. But that was good. Hams then, raising the bar to 175. He looked good for it at 165, but he's wasted energy there. Oh, yes, and a smile. <laughs> on to one leg, and when he's on fire, he's a great showman, Hams. To match him then, Ilakainen of Finland. Oof. That was great lifting from Ilakainen. And uh, that means that they've both used their three lifts up. And Katona has gone for the win here. He's going for 180, and it's only his second lift. This is a gamble. He's done 170. He's going for the win. I personally would have gone for 175 in the draw first. But he knows he's good. Oh! You're not allowed to uh, touch it on your head and drive it up again. Obviously, that's uh, an obvious uh, safety rule. Oh, Katona had it up there. And I wonder whether he's thinking it was a mistake as well to go straight to 180. I like his style, though. He needs the win if he's going to put pressure on Skapansky in the overall title. He needs this. Nearly 400 pounds. No way. No way. No way. In this intense heat, once you've uh, made a stab at that kind of weight and failed, it's all over. And, of course, you just follow yourself straight away again. Well, there's the results. And at the uh, very top on 175, it's Ilakainen and Hams. New personal record, new national record for both of them. Finland and the Netherlands have a new record. Skapanski still on top by just three points ahead of Ilakainen, who's driving forward. Katona, three points back from him in third position for Serbia. From August the 6th, Eurogoals is going daily. Welcome back uh, for this IFSA Strongman Contest in Bulgaria. It's Dravko Zanev, the uh, very slender Bulgarian at 102 kilos, trying to get this first stone up. It's 130 kilos, and that platform is 170 centimeters high. And uh, he only looks about 180 himself, so it's almost as tall as him. And there's quite an obvious uh, problem here that uh, these platforms aren't rooted to the ground. And as the stone hits into it, it's knocking it forward. Well, you're going to have to get a clean plop on, like a basketball, if you're going to get this on, because uh, the platform will just fall away from you otherwise. <laughs> At least uh, Zanev has a bit of a sense of humor about it. <laughs> And I have to say, it looks like this will be the last event of the day because of the heat. They are cancelling one of the events, the deadlift. And that's probably pretty sensible on behalf of the organisers. Look at that. That's better technique, surely, from Zolt Zabo. Now he's just got to pop it on. Little jump with the legs. There you go. Big Hungarian's got the 130 on, now on to the 150 kilo stone. He's wearing those uh, leather gladiator style forearm uh, covers. Touch of the big belly about him though, and that doesn't help in stone lifting. You need uh, long arms and a very slim waist to really be a great stone lifter. The likes of Magnus Samuelson or uh, 
other great stone lifters like Dave Oslin. There's another name from the USA. Long armed and slim waisted. But those uh, covers really do help you on these uh, concrete balls. If you're trying to avoid getting your arms cut up, though, I have to say they don't really help you in speed and competition. Much better to go bare armed with uh, a little bit of tacky glue on. It's also more macho. What's well, a little bit of cut and blood, eh? Anyway, Tobias Ide has gone for the uh, bare armed macho style. Oh, geez, he's also going for the use of his face there. That's <laughs> that looks pretty painful. Headbutting the 130 kilo stone up. And he's walking the wrong way now. He's probably a bit dizzy after that. One fifty kilos. Very snappy off the ground. Big drive and up it goes as the helpers try and hold the platform in position. Hundred and sixty kilos. This will be difficult to get off the ground. He's uh, gone for a bit of tacky, which he's got on the back of his hands there. He's spreading that around his arms. It's pine resin like you'd uh, get out of a sap out of a tree. It's extremely sticky stuff. And he's not a tall man either, not in strongman terms. Uh, just under six foot, he's struggling there, and uh, he calls it quits after two stones, but he's in the lead. Time for two, 44 seconds. Vladimir Ritsov, the Bulgarian, would certainly like to do a good time here to secure himself a uh, top six placing. Looks unlikely now he could affect the placing of Kiselnix in fifth, but you never know. Oh, up there quickly, but oh, stuck on his chin. Almost looks like he's got too much tacky on his arms. Oh, so close. Oh, like a golfer lipping out round a hole there. He just couldn't get it on. One half an inch more and that would have rolled on. That's the problem. Look, he's got too much tacky glue in his arms and it won't release when it's up there. Starting to tire now. He's got to get his head together here. This is an easy task for him. Oh, he's done it again. He's done it again and uh, reads off is having a shocker to end this contest. <laughs> Ali Hardy needs slapped by his friend there because I'm sure he realizes uh, what a muddle he's making of this. If he can just pop it to his shoulder, that would be far more sensible. He's bringing it up right in front of his face there and uh, can't quite see what he's doing. Yeah, he's... Uh, not too happy with himself and really you uh, wouldn't be too happy with yourself because that was pretty pretty stupid stone lifting it's a pretty simple art all you gotta do is whip it up and uh, pop it off your shoulder or drive it up your arms or if you're as tall as Agris Kaselnix it's uh, even easier <laughs> now this is how to lift stones Good lifting there. Three stones up already and he's taken the lead. No problem. Struggled to get that one off the floor, but the middle section on that 160 kilo stone and the 170 kilo stone was just so easy. So he moves on to the final stone. It weighs in at 180 kilos. 
And uh, that's that. The big man's been defeated. But at least uh, the other top boys have something to chase now. Jarno Hams has gone from uh, bad to good in this contest. Ho oh, ho! He could have slam dunk that in a 10 foot ring. There's some explosive power. And the guys behind better be careful. Surely he can't treat 160 kilo stone like that, but yes, he does. That's great power from Hams the Dutchman. Fourth one goes up, and he's taking the lead here. Stone number five. Drags it off the ground. Can he pop it up? Yes, he does. Great stone lifting from Hams, and he takes the lead, and the first man to do all five. And that 180 kilo last stone is difficult, is extremely difficult on its own. Never mind four lighter ones before it. Katona already making a mistake there. This could be a day Katona would uh, rather forget because a lot of people had him down on paper as winning overall. And it looks very unlikely now, unless Kapanski really screws up, that he will win. Again, good lifting. Round to the final stone then for Katona. Hamza's time, 38.18. And that time has now just come and gone, so he can't do it. Katona, up it goes. It's over 40 seconds for second place. And, uh, well, really, looking at the overall points, Katona would need Skopanski to uh, finish right down the bottom. In fact, Hams, uh, I think, on overall points will uh, stay in front of Katona, or certainly it'll be close. And Ilakainen here has a shout as well. Ilakainen, if he does this fast, could be in second or third. And he's so tall. Getting it up to the height is not a problem once he's got it to his knees. 180 to go and that's it. One last movement. And oh! Ilakainen is four stones are faster than Kanselnik's four stones. Kanselnik's was 39 seconds for the four. Ilakainen 21 for the four, but uh, he's not in the elite group like Hams and Katona. One man to go, and it's the leader of our contest, Robert Skopanski of Poland. He looks a little pedestrian here, but. Perhaps you could say it'll just be a workman-like performance that uh, he should be doing, and that's exactly what he is doing because that's all he needs to win. The penultimate stone popped on without a problem. And uh, with that stone, I am almost 100% certain he's now won this contest. This would uh, just be for glory. And glory he's got. He's done all five. 46.72 the time, just behind Katona. Hams did it in 38. Uh, but that doesn't really matter now because uh, even though Hams won and Katona beat him, Skapanski, who was third in the stones there, will be top overall here in Sofia, Bulgaria. There's confirmation, Skopanski of Poland by four points ahead of Ilakainen of Finland. Katona, the Serb, one point behind Hams, two back from him in fourth. What is your expectation? Uh, I, I, I'm angry a little because uh, I lose second place and uh, one point. And uh, I was two mistake in Superioc and the log lift. In 180 kilos I can't uh, uh, fix it. And that was uh, two and a half points, and now you second place with one points, but 
but okay, Robert, Robert the first is very strong, he's in the, the top five, top six in the couple years in the world. And I know before, before the competition, Robert is the winner. But uh, the, for the second place was his open. And, uh, but okay, no injury, no nothing, I feel good. Third place also not bad. What is your suggestion for Bulgaria? I, I, this is the uh, third competition for me here in Bulgaria. Uh, two times was in uh, Sofia, one time in Varna. And I, I love come here because uh, Serbia and Bulgaria are uh, almost same, same thinking people, same music, same uh, everything, almost same. Thank I love so Bulgaria. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I'm satisfied with my results. Tired. Tired. Yeah, but still a little bit happy because uh, I had a, a new national record on the log lift and I won the stones. So uh, I started the day feeling sick. I, I was feeling like I had to throw up. And the uh, first three events were not going really well. But after that I felt a little bit better and you could see that the performance went up. So in all in the end I'm, I'm still satisfied. How do you feel in Bulgaria? It's first time but uh, it's, it's a nice country. And, uh, well, you can see here, you have beautiful buildings. It's, uh, it's marvelous. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Ами трудно от организационна страна горещините ни затрудниха доста. Нямаме време, а и не можем да изпочнем бъргарите. Achievements by the athletes. The athletes seem to enjoy it, and uh, the Bulgarian competitors were good also. We wanted to show the world that our uh, boys were good and uh, were just as strong as the others. Of course, uh, some of these guys are the very strongest in the world. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this contest, this IFSA Strongman Grand Prix of Bulgaria as uh, our athletes take to the podium. Zdravko Zanev, uh, the small Bulgarian there, uh, ended up in last position. Tobias Ide, the uh, German who seemed to have uh, problems throughout the day, including that farmer's walk breaking on him, was uh, in eighth. Zabo, the big Hungarian, was uh, in seventh. Vlado Ritsov, Bulgaria's number one. <laughs> nice uh, car wheel there, Jano, was in sixth. Kaselnik's the big Latvian in fifth. Hams there, ended up in fourth. Herman Katona. Enjoying a joke with Hams. Doesn't seem too disappointed with his uh, bronze medal here. But certainly he is a top competitor in the world. Elakainen will enjoy the scalp of Katona. The Finn will uh, get to sit in second position and take away the silver medal. But there's only one champion, and in Sofia, Bulgaria today, it's uh, Poland's uh, number one for the IFSA Federation. It's Robert Skopanski. Well, it's been an interesting competition here in Bulgaria. We've seen some new faces and some old faces. But there's certainly a lot of promise uh, for the new Bulgarian Ritsov, I think. And Jarno Ham's back in contention again. It'll be uh, perhaps uh, an interesting European Championships for IFSA later in the year. And indeed a World Championships as their European contingent certainly seems uh, fairly strong at the moment. Well, I'll leave you with some uh, fireworks.
Turks and Champagne here in Bulgaria. Poland on top once again in a strongman contest. Uh, that's it for me, Colin Bryce. Until next time, bye-bye.